We've all been there. We've all been a new sewist. We've all put it out into the world that we want to start sewing something or that we have something that we need to sew and we don't have a sewing machine and it never fails. There's somebody in your family. Maybe it's your mom. Maybe it's your uncle. Maybe it's one of your grandparents. Maybe it's the person behind you at the grocery store. Maybe it's your neighbor. And somebody at some point is going to say to you, oh, you need a sewing machine? You know what? I got one in my basement. It's been sitting down there for decades. Haven't touched it in forever. You can use that. Awesome. But there's some things you need to do to that machine before you start sewing on it, and we're gonna get to that today. All right, so here you are. You have a new to you sewing machine that is decades old, probably weighs about 150 pounds, and it's all yours. Well, there's a few things to know. Probably if it's been sitting tucked away in somebody's basement, you can't rely that they had it serviced before they tucked it away. In fact, they probably haven't had it serviced ever because people often don't. So what is the first thing that you're going to look for is your instruction manual. Now, this book did not look like this when it came to me. Only half of it was together and what was together was held together with a shoelace. But it was all there. That was the important part. Now, we're going to talk about what happens if you don't have a manual in a second. Let's talk about if you have to restore a manual. So I had to put a new back cover on. I just had some cardstock, so I cut a new one that was the same size as the front cover. I laminated the front and back and I got the whole thing rebound. But there was a bunch of pages that had um, the holes for the binding were ripped through. So what I did, and I don't know if you can see sort of the sheen. There it is. There. Um, I took packing tape and I just went sheet by sheet and I put the packing tape on and then I folded it around and pressed it down really nicely. Um, I did that to every single sheet whether the binding holes were broken or not because even though these kind of bindings are fairly universal and if you you know take it to Staples or whatever copy center you have to have it rebound um, the chances are is the holes are going to be the same size and they're going to be the same distance apart but what you can't rely on is that the holes are going to start in the same spot so if you have half of your pages um getting re-punched you could wind up with like your old binded pages and then your new ones might kind of be like higher or lower and not really line up so i reinforced all my pages and i kind of look at it as this manual is going to last for another 40 years easy because they're all reinforced um, and it's a good thing that I did because the, the binding holes definitely did not line up. So all my pages are in there nice. I don't have to worry about anything falling out. Now, what do you do if you don't have a manual at all? Well, the fantastic thing is you can find most manuals online. Now, had I not had this manual, I could go to, um, Kenmore Manuals dot com I think it was and I could print one out for like six bucks they also had like the service manual which is in more detail and looking at how to repair and stuff like that which I probably will go back and get that one but for now I just needed this one now this manual has all the instructions I need for how to properly clean and oil my own machine if you do have one of these older machines and you don't have the manual for it, look below and I just did some searching around and I found some resources of where you can find old manuals. So if you have that problem, I hope that'll be helpful for you. Now the machine that I'm working on today is one that I just got as a hand-me-down from my mother-in-law and I'm super excited about it. My machine that I work on, my Janome, is in really good working order. It's been recently serviced. I have no concerns with it. I took this machine because I do enough sewing that having a backup machine is actually useful. Um, when I send my machine in for a repair or anything like that, I need something to sew on. Plus, my machine is a quilting machine and although it has stretch stitches, it's kind of crap with stretch fabric. So I was hoping that this machine would be a lot better with stretch fabric. Spoiler alert, it was, and it was so amazing. I'm so excited, but that's a whole other video. Now, let me assure you, I am not an expert in this in any way. I do not have some kind of certificate in small machine repair. Um, I don't have a ton of extra knowledge. I am armed with my manual and that is it, okay? I wanna show you that even having no experience doing this, it's something that anybody can just follow the instructions and tackle, okay? I wanna just demystify this because now there are a few special tools that we are gonna be needing today. The first one is machine oil and you want something with like a long spout like this. I got this at the sewing store, um, it was like five bucks. The next thing you need are some Q-tips, a little screwdriver, 
Um, newer sewing machines don't seem to come with good screwdrivers anymore. They come with like this little plate that's cut like a screwdriver. I don't know. Just do yourself a favor. Get yourself a real screwdriver. A couple of little bristle brushes. These are from the dollar store. They're paint brushes and I just keep them aside when I buy paint brushes for my kids. And a can of air. Um, the instructions don't call for me to have a can of air, but you'll be amazed at how I'll brush everything away and it'll all look clean and then I'll hit it with the air and more stuff just comes out. It just, it gets in there. This is your friend, okay? Grab one of these. And then while you're at it, you can do like your keyboard and all the other crap in your house that's too little to clean. So let's get started. All right, so here I've just taken the case lid off of this old Kenmore, Sears Kenmore. I'm going to plug it in, but before I even plug it in, um, I'm just gonna make sure that my wheel turns freely. My, like all my pieces are moving here. And I can see movement down here in my bobbin. And when I do that, I'm really just looking for any like big issues that right off the bat, I would be like, okay, I need to take this in and have it repaired. As long as everything's moving freely though, um, feel comfortable just plugging it in and seeing what happens. I can turn the light on. And this model you'll see is a model that you can use tabletop or um, you can actually put it inside of a sewing machine cabinet. Now I'm going to take the needle out because I am the type of person who will stab myself. <laughs> and I'm gonna take the foot off. There we go. Just getting as many moving parts sort of out of the way as I can. I'm going to take my bobbin holder out. All right, so you can see there's these little levers here and they hold your shuttle race in. So I'm gonna knock those to the side. And now I'll be able to remove my shuttle. Ooh, there we go. And so in there you can see, I definitely have to give the inside of the cabinet a clean, which would be super easy. And so before I get in there with my can of air, I'm actually gonna do that because right now, I mean, I'll get in there with a brush too, but if I were just to like blow, blow air in there, it's just gonna kick up all that dust and that's not gonna do me any favors, so. Let's take a look. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna clean in here first. There's bits of broken needles. I'll get rid of them so I'm not stabbing myself. All right, I'm just gonna use a wet paper towel to grab all of this. You could vacuum it out. Uh, that's easier for you. I'm hoping my little one will go down for a nap, so I'm trying to not make too much noise. Now, I'm not touching the machine or anything with the damp paper towel, so I'm not, they're not, I'm not getting moisture on my machine. And by the time I close this all up, this will have been air dried, so no worries there. Now, you can really get in and like see where you've got bits of thread fibers just sort of accumulating. And you can get rid of those. I like just having something on hand that I can wipe my hands on too. And so I'm gonna get in and just kind of like give everything a bit of a brush. And I'm just moving, removing the sort of bigger debris. You can see everything that's accumulated here. All things considered, this machine's actually pretty clean. Even that, I mean, eventually this stuff is gonna gum up your work. So it's better to just do this regularly. And especially if this is the first time, if you've gotten this machine secondhand, you've never used it before, like it's best to just start off doing this.
Right here, this is the shuttle race. So those two pieces that we took out, they sit in here. So that's a spot where a lot of thread can get stuck in. You know, you find the darndest things. <laughs> so say a, a piece of artificial Christmas tree. <laughs> there, that's a bit easier to see if I put something behind it, hey? All right, so this is your shuttle race cover. And so you'll see there's sort of like a little groove in there. Just make sure you really get in there and wipe everything clean. And I, if I just take my fingernail there, there's a little bit of probably old oil. And you can even get in there with like a Q-tip and just sort of get everything good and cleaned out. And I'm going to do the same thing with my shuttle. There we go. That looks pretty good and clean to me. Now the oil residue that you did find on here, this is going to get oil on it when we re-oil it and that's fine. So don't feel like you need to have all the oil off of it, but it's when you get fuzz and bits of thread and stuff mixed in with the oil that it's a problem. All right, now before I put everything back together, I'm going to put a drop of oil on the center pin. That came out a bit fast. All right, all right. So this seems to be working better. If I hold this open like this, I can get more light in here. So I'm going to take my little oiler and I'm going to put a drop of oil in the shuttle race, okay? Which is the, the part that the shuttle is moving in. So now it's time to put this assembly back together. And so on my model, the instructions tell me to hold my shuttle race so that it's a half moon with the pointy end at the bottom and to hold it by the center pin. And then I should be able to just place that back in there. There we go. And then I have my shuttle race cover and you want the flat side out because remember there's these little pins here that those levers are gonna grab onto. So then you just place that on top, close your pins, or sorry, close your levers, and your assembly is back together. And now you'll be able to place your bobbin holder back in. So that's completely cleaned and oiled now. All right, the next thing I need to do is I need to remove my cover plate here. So on this model, I need to move the bobbin winder thing over. That's part of what, it's, it's in the way. All right, so I can completely remove that. And I'm actually gonna just replace my plate down there just to keep from anything from falling in that we've just, now that we've cleaned under there. So in my manual, it gives you a diagram where all of the oiling points are in this handy dandy dark lime green against a light lime green <laughs> photo. So you really gotta take your time and make sure you catch them all. It's a little bit of like a Where's Waldo diagram to make sure that you get them all. But basically you're just looking from the top down and I'm going to go arrow by arrow and make sure that I hit all of those points. And all I need to do is to put literally a drop of oil in each of the points. So the first spot is Actually, when I open up this cover here, I kind of get more access. So I'm gonna put a, a drop there. And you can give it, give it a rotate, make sure that everything is getting oiled up well. And really what you're looking for, there's two things. There's places where there's sort of like a little receptacle for oil to go in, but then there's places also where you've got metal rubbing on metal and it's really obvious. And so those are gonna be the places that you need to oil. All right, I'm gonna put my top plate back on, maybe. <laughs> there we go.
Now, while you're down here, especially if this is a new machine too, make sure that you just have a good look at your cords. Um, because they come through this box, sometimes if they've been pulled on or whatever, you can see a little bit of wear here. And these ones look really good, so just make sure that you check that spot and make sure that everything is all good there. Now we can flip this closed again. Now the last thing I'm going to do is just going to give everything a wipe down. I've sprayed all that dust and fluff everywhere, so you never know where it's settled. And also, especially down here, you never know if you went a little gung-ho with the oil, if there's a drop or something, you don't want that to wind up on your projects. And there you go, it's really that easy. Well, there you have it. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope I have demystified the process of cleaning and oiling your machine and you have seen that even somebody who is new to it, like me, can do this and it's not intimidating and it's not scary and you're not gonna lose a finger and you're not gonna break your machine, especially if you have one of these like all metal old gems that can survive anything. If this is something that you've never contemplated doing before, but you're gonna try it now, give me a heck yeah in the comments and let me know because I'm excited to see some more people trying this out. It honestly was so super easy. Other than that, I got nothing else for you this week. So do all the things, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you next week.